All right, we are back here on the show, folks, getting ready for Bellator 155. It is coming up on Friday night, May the 20th, from Boise, Idaho. We are going to feature Alexis Dufresne taking on our guest at this time, a pioneer when it comes to women's mixed martial arts. She is Marlos Kunin, who is joining us here on the program. Uh, Marlos, there, there's been a, a lot of uh, changes to this particular card. You were preparing for Julia Budd. Now it's Alexis Dufresne. Has, has it been a lot of curveballs thrown your way in preparation for this fight here in Bellator? <laughs> yeah, you're right. And uh, it was a big disappointment to hear that Julia had to pull out. Because um, I was focusing on, on getting a title in Bellator, and it was the first title uh, since got a CEO there. So yeah, that was a big bummer. And uh, but a few days later, they uh, they told me they had another fight for me. It wouldn't be for the title anymore. But I was like, hey, I've been preparing anyway, and I want to fight. You know, it's it's pretty the most important. So um, yeah, I told them that I was really uh, happy to fight. Has Bellator told you what their plans are to introduce the featherweight championship, or is that up in, in the air at this point? Yeah, at the, the, the last thing, because I think Julia is injured, so I don't know when she will be, uh, when she's recovered again, and I don't know the schedule of Bellator when they have uh, fighting, and uh, I hope to, to clear that after my fight in, uh, in Boise with uh, the Bellator people. Have you had time to, to look a lot at, at Alexis Dufresne? Are you that familiar w- with her? Of course I Googled her. <laughs> I don't know I'm fighting. So when I, when I started fighting, it felt like looking at myself because she, she's exactly the same height. And I can tell she has the same strength as I have. She's, she's not built with, like, I don't know, I can put it in English, but, like, you know, the round, bulky muscles. It's more like like a hidden strength. And uh, she's from Team Quest, so she's a great grappler and wrestler. So um, I also thought that when she can stop, she's really happy. She really uh, keeps her mouth good. So, yeah, I, you know, what, uh, there's one thing I've learned in fighting is that it's to never underestimate a person. And in MMA, everybody can get knocked out. The fact that this now is a, a three-round fight, I mean, does does that change much for you? I mean, you were preparing here for a championship fight with, with Julia Budd. I mean, does that really change anything for you, the fact that this is now three rounds? No, because when you're in a fight and after the third round, it doesn't matter if you're in the fourth or the fifth anymore. Then you're in such a mental state and your heart is pounding at a certain rhythm and, uh, no, it doesn't matter. At this stage of your career, Marlos, are you primarily just focused on, on mixed martial arts? Because with Bellator branching off and now creating Bellator kickboxing, is that something that you think you could manage uh, going back and forth, doing mixed martial arts and kickboxing? Or would you just like to keep your your focus on mixed martial arts? Oh, no, I'm really open to that. Yeah. Come up, I will do it. No problem. You could be uh, like Melvin Manhoff. I mean, he goes from, from kickboxing one month to mixed martial arts the other. I think he's yeah. de- he's determined to have as many fights as possible in a given year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's an amazing fighter. I love him. You know, when, when Melvin is fighting, you know, one thing, one of the two persons will... will he's always... Uh, yeah, I, I, we're fighting on the same card, so I'm really going to root for him after my fight. It's been a bit of a stretch here since we last saw you in action. Has this been a frustrating period just in terms of getting a fight and and thus your reasoning here that you just, you just as you have mentioned, you just want to get in there and have an actual fight? What has this stretch been like for you in between fights? Yeah, well, I haven't actually probably big time. It's like every month I think I'm having this fight in two months. And then the month passes by. I'm like, okay, well, it will be the month after that. And so in your mind, you're always busy with the fight that's coming up and it's not coming. But on the other hand, this has been the case since 2011. So I'm not used to it. And for me, it's more important that they give me a fight. And they really, I mean, it was really easy for Bella to say, okay, uh, did a bit pull out. Well, we will postpone it. But instead, they said, hey, Manus, yeah, she did pull out, but we have a new opponent for you, so you can still fight. You know that, that tells me that they really want me to see. They really want me to uh, fight on their card. So I'm happy with that. And um, I also think, as a prof- professional fighter, you need to be able to to deal with things like that. It's not a not an easy ride being an MMA fighter, and it's not only fighting and knocking people out and breaking arms and whatever. It's, it's the whole game around it. And uh, if you cannot handle that, don't step into the cage. 
How important was um, the introduction of Scott Coker to oversee Bellator? How important was that in your decision coming to Bellator? You've obviously fought for him in, in the past. Tell me about your relationship with Scott Coker and, and him overseeing Bellator at this point. Well, if, if Scott wouldn't be at Bellator, I wouldn't be at Bellator. I mean, I started with Bellator because, I mean, he would be in charge. And um, when I was fighting a strike for it, uh, what I like about Scott is he has been a, he's a martial artist himself. You know, he's been a teacher, and he really, really loves the game. And uh, before, you know, uh, strike for he was a K-1 promoter. And uh, this is a man with passion for the sports, and you see that in, in, in how the whole organization is structured. I mean, the people working uh, at Bellator, yeah, it's maybe a bit weird. <laughs> like when you come, when you arrive, it also kind of seems like a new family almost. And uh, and yeah, to me as a fighter, I really appreciate that. Is it true uh, as well, Marlos, that you are writing a book? Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, wow, you're well informed. <laughs> I, I did my studying, uh, Marlos. Is, is the book uh, about combat sports and, and your history? Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a publisher in the Netherlands who asked me to write a book, <clears throat> and it's about because of I'm doing this for twenty years and I've learned a lot of it. And it's like subtitles, actually working titles, life lessons from the cage, because fighting is so much more than just uh, smashing someone's face. And it's about a mental uh, game. It's about uh, testing yourself. And what I always uh, what my my message always you know, is that you can you're able to do so much more than you think that you can. And fighting is the the ideal uh, to when you play tennis or whatever. And you know, I, I see a lot of people things and they get on stages and they talk for big audiences. But to prepare yourself to go for battle, you know, to say like, okay, uh, I agree. In six months, I will have this fight and I will train and I will keep my eye on the goal. I will do this. Put up the pressure. You think the media and everything. It changes it. And especially for women who are taught, you know, at least in the Western world, we are taught to be obedient, to be kind, to, to, to put someone else uh, before. I mean, probably better English, but that's my lack of word of English. But uh, you always um, put someone else in front of you, you know, like first you help another and then you think of yourself, like what mothers have to do, mm-hmm. you know. But what I've also been here in the Netherlands and what I've seen when women come into my gym and what I've experienced myself as well. Is that once you you you, you recognize the, the the inner strength that you have in you, you uh, it's so big. It's like almost like you're a lion, and all your life you've been told that you're a sheep. And when you find out that you're a lion, it changes your life. So the book is a little bit about that, and chapters are about the next ten life lessons. And when is the book going to be? Get it, it <laughs> yeah, when, when is the book going to be coming out, Marlos? Uh, November, probably. Well, we will uh, definitely keep our eye on, out for see, that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would think she'll copy it in front of reading in Dutch. Oh, I, I would love to read it. I, th- I think it'd be uh, incredible uh, to check out. And we'd love to have you uh, come back on when the book comes out. And we'll uh, we'll certainly uh, discuss the book further. Oh. Uh, but uh, coming up, it's Friday night. Yes. Uh, Friday night, May the 20th. It's going to be Alexis Dufresne taking on... Marlus Kunin, uh, it's a fight. You can tune into the prelim portion to catch it. We'll be headlining uh, that portion of Bellator 155. And then I guess if all goes well, Marlus, you'll be fighting Julia Budd in your next fight, hopefully for the Bellator Featherweight Championship. Would that be your ideal scenario? Yeah, and I hope it will be uh, really seeing that we've done a meaty color in the cage. Excellent stuff. Well, Marlus, all the best uh, going into Bellator 155. We will be watching, and uh, all the best during fight week. <laughs>